Welcome to Working for Women, the independent women's forum podcast, where we are changing the conversation about women and public policy for the better. Hello, I'm Hadley Heath Manning, Director of Policy at Independent Women's Forum and your host for today's Working for Women podcast. Today, I'm here with our own Patrice Anwuka. She's our Senior Policy Analyst at Independent Women's Forum, and we're going to be discussing highlights from the State of the Union Address. This is the first State of the Union Address that President Trump has given since he's been in office, so a pretty important speech, I'd say. So uh, thanks to all of our listeners for tuning in. Patrice, I just want to throw it to you. What are your overall thoughts? Was it Did it meet your expectations? Was it a good speech? Did the president say what Americans needed to hear? Uh, I think yes, yes, and yes. Uh, he, he said what Americans needed to hear. He talked about, you know, how the economy is improving day-to-day lives for Americans. He talked about, um, you know, some of the, the challenges that, that failures in our public policy have led to. And he really illustrated those points nicely um, with, with the, the guests that he invited. Um, some really powerful stories um, around opioids, around uh, unfortunately, the the violence that MS thirteen MS thirteen has inflicted on families. But you know, the overall tone was optimistic. It was forward looking, and and an, on a number of occasions, he really tried to reach across the aisle and come across as bipartisan. So I, I really thought this was a very good speech. Not only is the economy and the the nation in a good place, but I think the president really articulated that well. But you know, you happily, what, do you, what did you take away from it? What did you think about this his speech? You know, I wasn't sure what to expect. I think there was a lot of speculation about the content and all of those boxes got checked. We knew the president would be talking about the economy. Uh, he has a lot to brag about mm-hmm. there. He talked about his tax reform uh, package. I knew he would talk about immigration and infrastructure as sort of some of his next top priorities. Um, but with President Trump, he's a hard guy to sort of to know what to expect. You know, he's not your typical politician. <laughs> Um, but I thought this was a very traditional political speech. It was a very traditional State of the Union address. And I thought uh, because of the positive tone, it was a lot of what Americans needed to hear. You know, a lot of commentators have pointed out that he spent a lot of time on individual stories, you know, praising Americans who have yeah. adopted babies or who have survived, you know, a, a terrible um, you know, overcome the odds in a lot of their stories. And I guess you know, some mm-hmm. of that stuff is political theater, but um, I think the overall message from those personal stories is something the president said explicitly that the, the state of the union is strong because our people are strong. And I think that's a very conservative thing to say, you know, that we're not really <laughs> counting on the government to save the day, but it's really, it's always been the American people who are moving the country forward and solving our nation's problems. So I actually liked that that aspect of the speech that he highlighted, sort of the heroism um, and the sort of everyday courage of Americans. I thought that was great. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he started out talking about the economy in terms of, you know, policy topics. And that is a policy issue. It's also a very personal uh, thing. As you mentioned, Patrice, it's really improving people's lives in a personal way. Um, but I wanted to get your take on uh, that particular topic. Were there any surprises in what the president said about the economy or what caught your attention there? You know, not too many surprises. Um, he, he obviously touted the uh, the tax reform um, bill and the tax cuts that were passed at the end of December, and those were great. Um, but he also kind of talked about the stock market and how it's in a kind of a blockbuster um, state where we're seeing record highs. But what I, I really appreciate, and I think Americans will appreciate, is that he boiled that down to what it means for them every day. You know, it's for folks who are watching their 401ks and thinking about retirement. They're seeing um, you know, the, the, ri- the meteoric rise of the stock market really um, helped them build their, their nest egg for the future. But it's not just people with 401ks. I mean, he talked about people who have pensions. Um, he talked about people who have college saving plans. So, you know, when you look at the economy um, and how it's performing, how the stock market is performing, he's tying it to, you know, what that means for regular, you know, Americans. Um, I think he also talked about uh, not only are you – are Americans making money through the stock market, but also from tax reform and taxes. And you know, he laid out some of the the, uh, the really great um, individual side changes um, from tax cuts themselves to you know changes to the standard deduction, um, the child tax credit. Um, but he he uh, I, th- I think he kind of goes into how uh, this tax reform um, effort is really going to deliver Americans better paying jobs, bonuses. 
um, more wages and allowing them to keep more of what they earn. And, you know, there was a terrific story we highlighted uh, of a guy who's a welder um, who lost his job during, during the recession, you know, and recently got a new job. And, and his company, very small, probably 14 people or, or 30 people, something like that, um, but they're able to, uh, to, to, to um, increase wages and, and hire more people. Uh, and, and so I think it's just a, another example of how, you know, tax policy and economic policy that really promotes growth can help uh, regular workers and regular families. And so I think those are really some strong highlights and standouts for me last night. Yeah, you know, I heard a couple of issues that um, stuck out to me. They're, they're kind of economic. They're also kind of social um, policy issues. And they're issues where I would hope that there's opportunities for bipartisanship, and that was paid leave. Um, and then drug policy. He mentioned the high cost of pharmaceutical drugs and um, he mentioned the opioid crisis. Um, and so I, I would say, you know, the hard thing about bipartisanship in this moment is that while you can have ideas that gain support from both sides of the aisle, those same ideas often um, also get criticism from both sides. You know, we've um, been oh, advancing... Yeah. We've been advancing a, uh, a proposal that would uh, reform the Social Security program and basically give workers an opportunity to take parental leave benefits um, ahead of their retirement. So it would be a trade-off. You know, you could take a certain number of weeks off um, after the birth of a child and get partial income replacement from Social Security if you're eligible, meaning you're in the workforce um, and you've paid into Social Security for some time. And then on the flip side, you defer your Social Security benefit. Now, I hope that the president uh, is aware of our proposal. I think he may be. Um, yeah, but yeah. we didn't see we didn't see a lot of Republicans clapping when he mentioned paid leave. I think because <laughs> tip, typically when we talk about expanding paid leave, you know, the Democrats have been leading on the issue and they've been advancing mandates and entitlements and we would say sort of generally bad ideas. Um, two other mm-hmm. topics that he covered were immigration and infrastructure, other issue areas where we might see some bipartisanship. <laughs> what do you think, Patrice, yeah. will be the administration's way forward on those priorities? So I think, um, well, one is both are going to be very important. And I think the president laid that out. Um, you know, when it comes to infrastructure, that was actually viewed as one of those bipartisan um, opportunities. You know, you're going to have some conservatives who definitely don't want to increase the national debt to pay for, you know, for a very expensive um, uh, uh, infrastructure package. But at the same time, I think there generally people are open to ensuring that our our transportation systems, our bridges, our railroads, our um, you know, our roads, you know, are, are maintained and kept up. And, and that is partly a, potentially a way of, of creating jobs, although we, we saw what happened with the stimulus jobs under Obama, which were like a shovel to nowhere. Um, so I do think we will, we will see some efforts toward that. Will it be a massive sweeping package that, that you know, some on the left would love to see? Probably not. Um, but I do think it's going to be a way for the administration to, to try to reach across the aisle. Um, now on immigration, that is definitely one of those uh, contentious um, uh, opportunities. And I don't know if you noticed, the cameras did not capture this, but a, a Democratic uh, representative actually walked out when the president was talking about immigration. But the irony here is that President Trump laid out his plan, which would you know, deal with some of the more pressing immigration issues, specifically um, minors who are brought to the United States illegally, you know, what's going to happen uh, dealing with, with the DACA program. Uh, but then broadly, you know, thinking through um, what does immigration reform look like, ensuring that border security is included um, and, and, and ensuring that, um, you know, we, we deal with just our, how we decide who is allowed to come to this country. That can be a bipartisan opportunity. Um, it may very well be that you see polit- uh, people on both polls kind of run to the opposite sides. But generally, most Americans you know, support the idea of immigration reform because we recognize the value, the values um, and values that immigrants bring to our nation and our economy. So, you know, I do think, of course, immigration is probably going to be one of those more immediate issues to be tackled. Um, but it, I wouldn't be surprised if we do see uh, the administration work with Congress on something for infrastructure uh, by the summertime of this year, but definitely something this year. So, you know, I, I, it's 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 going to be interesting. Any any anything on the immigration front or the infrastructure front from your perspective? Well, you know, I've always thought the closer to home, the better on infrastructure, um, because you know, people who live in in 
neighborhoods and in cities use those roads and bridges the most. So I hope whatever the federal government advances on infrastructure will defer and devolve as much decision making as possible to state and local level on immigration. I mean, that's truly a national policy issue. And I agree with everything you said, Patrice. I think it's going to be the most urgent issue because some of the the dreamers, the miners who are um, brought here under the Deferred um, Action on Childhood Arrivals or DACA program, they're facing a deadline in early March um, where there needs to be congressional action. So that's what I think will be the, the, you know, the deal that's made about DACA will be, you know, a handful of issues. It won't be a comprehensive immigration reform, but that's really, that's yeah. okay. You know, taking small right. steps is okay. <laughs> well, you know, small steps are, um, are, I think it's a good way kind of just to wrap our discussion here. Uh, overall, I think, you know, Americans really seem to have uh, appreciated what the president had to say last night. And, and you know, I, I don't know if you caught that uh, the poll results coming out of it, but I think like three quarters of Americans, um, you know, liked what they heard in, in his speech. And, and I think it's because he, they heard optimism. They heard how their personal financial situation is going to be improved or is improving. Um, and, you know, and, and I think they're looking forward to you know, something different than they haven't had before. So, you know, I, I, I really thank you so much for talking with me about the lively State of the Union address. Sometimes these things can be boring, but last night was definitely not boring. Uh, for folks who'd love to learn more uh, about uh, the State of the Union address, we've got a couple of blog posts up today uh, just giving some highlights uh, on the on the. Um, in the State of the Union, um, and uh, and visit our website for more information, particularly on the paid leave um, plan or proposal that that Hadley just mentioned. Uh, we think that this could be a really strong solution to allowing or ensuring that every American can get access to paid leave by doing so without you know the onerous government mandates that are uh, that can be harmful and, and have some unintended consequences. So thanks everybody for joining us for our podcast today. Um, this is Patrice. Uh, on Wuka, we were joined today by Hadley, uh, Heath Manning, this is our website at iwf.org. Um, and I think this wraps this edition of IWF's Working for Women podcast. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast, please give it a thumbs up, share it on social media, or stop by iwf.org for similar content.